Pat Mahomes is the clear leader on this offense and on this team, but he's got a couple of guys that are able to lend a hand now, and that's going to make a huge difference come this season. They got off to a great start, and we're going to get right into what's going on at Chiefs training camp. Welcome back. This is Ryan going rogue, and there's plenty to talk about. As the team got into St. Joe last week, but now they are really off and settling into what they have to do for their work to get ready for the regular season. First padded practice has come and went, and they've gotten a lot done. There's plenty to talk about, and I could do six videos on what's gone on so far in just the first five practices, but what we're going to talk about today is specifically who's leading this group beyond Patrick Mahomes. Uh, and so it's not just about him. It's got to be more, uh, even though he came out firing pretty well too. I'll do another video on that. But if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscription, the notification so you know when a new video goes up, as well as leave your comment below and leave a thumbs up if you like this particular video. Now, Pat Mahomes did come out firing and he is really working on all cylinders. Uh, very much so making the no looks, making all these things. We're going to see some clips here in a couple of minutes. And as he's gone through, it really illustrates that the work that he's done in the offseason is allowed him to pick right back up where he was, trying to take those steps forward and doing the little things that he does that is so unique to him. And while that's great, it can't be done all by himself. And he had a couple of run-ins so far this week with the two guys on the other side of the ball that are now in charge of leading it. Uh, and first was Tyron Matthew, who I think has come in and really set from day one the tone that he is going to be a vocal leader, a guy that the rest of this defense can look to uh, and can take inspiration from, particularly in the secondary. But that's not all. Uh, there was a, there was a play uh, early in the week where as ball was stripped out and uh, Tyron Matthew ended up with it. Uh, we're going to take a look at it right here. Now, the great thing about that play is not only did the defense do its job, get the ball out and actually return it in, in a positive way, and Tyron Matthew was the guy to do that, but the fact that uh, Mahomes was in pursuit enough to get over there and make the play, had it been a, a live go, he would have been in position, but clearly the two have respect for each other and realize that this team cannot afford for either of them to get hurt. Tyron Matthew even came out and said <laughs> a couple of things on social media that I found pretty funny and, and really was illustrating just the fact that Tyron Matthew is the quarterback of the defense as well. There might be an inspirational leader. We'll talk about him here in a minute. But as far as quarterbacking from the secondary, it's going to be Tyron Matthew and what he's able to do, the plays that he's able to make, and more importantly, how he's able to direct everybody else. There's a lot of youth going on in this secondary in particular, a lot of question marks. And as we've seen some of the injuries go down, uh, particularly in that group, uh, with Keith Reeser, looks like he's going to be out with an Achilles tear, uh, will cost him the season if that is the diagnosis. Um, that's a, a guy that they were looking to step into once Bashad Breeland had been injured uh, on the first day. Just a laceration to his thumb. He did return later in the week. And looks like he's uh, going to start getting reps uh, and, and getting back into speed. But and it shows you how thin that particular group is. In fact, I may have to do a whole different conversation on that one. Uh, but what that means is guys with less experience are getting more reps. That's great for learning, but it's not great for consistency. So that falls to your leadership. And Tyron Matthew was the guy that needs to do that. He started out with Dan Sorensen backing him up uh, as the deep safety the first couple days of practice. And Juan Thornhill has been coming on strong since then. I'll do a rookie wrap-up here probably next week so we can see the, the progression that the class has made. But just leave it to be said that plays are being made by Juan Thornhill as well as Tyron Matthew back there in the back of the defense. And one place that there aren't a whole lot of rookies making an impact yet and that's along the defensive front because 
The Chiefs have gone out of their way to build up a front with experience that they can rely on to make plays. And as much as Tyron Matthew may be the quarterback of the defense, uh, the guy that's in charge schematically, there's got to be an alpha dog too, a guy that's inspirational, a guy that pushes guys, that calls guys out. That's uber important, and it's something that while Tyron Matthew can do in a certain sense, the, the big dudes aren't don't quite listen to the little dudes as, as well. There's got to be somebody in that front, and Frank Clark is obviously it. it. It ties back together to what Brett Veach and Andy Reid had as a concept when they brought these guys into the roster, and that is that both of them need to push. And both of them need to have an edge and bring that spark and that push to the defense. Uh, when we got to hear from Frank Clark this week, that couldn't have rung more true. And he really started and right off the bat hit the biggest key, and that is that you have to have an attitude. I feel like we can be very good, you know, but um, first step is creating that competitive atmosphere. I feel like, um, like we all talked about, you know, just being brutally honest. Um, it wasn't here on the defensive side last year. Um, you know, when you look around, you see, you know, total defense, we rate 31st in the league. You know, that doesn't make anyone proud, you know, as a fan, as a, as a coach, as a player, you shouldn't be proud. So, um, you know, thanks to Coach Reed, thanks to Veach, you know, and everyone who has something to do with bringing us together this year on this defense. But, you know, we come in here with a whole different type of attitude. You know, we come in here to win, we come in here to compete, and we want to be the best. Now, that clip in particular may set some of you a little bit off east because it is basically calling out the leadership from years past, particularly last season, in Justin Houston and Eric Berry, for that matter, as well. And while you can say that, that that's derogatory towards them, that the facts are the facts and that that defense didn't perform very well. And you have to take what is going to be the future and move on from it. So even if you felt like that stung a little bit, it's good for this defense to hear those words. It's good to get a new attitude, a new leader in that room and let everything flow from him. Let him be the guy that says, forget about the past, focus on now, and let's be better. We'll talk more about how Frank goes about doing that here in a, in a couple of minutes. But first, I, I want to make sure to emphasize that it's the coaches that are leading the parade. And you can hear when star athletes refer to the coaches. And the thing about uh, Spagnolo is we've heard the term energy from him. He's very hands-on, working with individual players, pulling them out of meetings, taking them to the side here in training camp as well, and really digging into it. And Frank also had a couple of things to say that, that show you that it's more involved, and he's really gone all in in exposing the entire team to what his scheme really is going to be. Yes, and I'm not going to lie. You know, Spag's legendary coach. You know, he came in, he threw everything at us, you know, in the spring. He, he put the, you know, the whole script out there and, you know, put it into our hands as the players and, you know, to really invest our time into learning this playbook. You know, you look down the history of him, you know, him coaching with Coach Reed in um, Philly, him coaching, you know, this wonderful New York Giants defense. Um, he's just a great coach. And, and, and it's no mystery to when, you know, guys adapt to, you know, his calling, adapt to the things he's saying and just, you know, fall in line, the success we can have. Now, having the entire defense at your fingertips early on in camp gives you maybe an overwhelming um, feeling, especially if you're a younger player. But in general, it gives you the, the tools to have it all in front of you, to let it the bigger plan lay out in front of a playbook. And that's a big, big plus. Frank Clark had something interesting to say about that as well, about the state of what Andy Reid does and how things have to be when you are training uh, in this area, under this coach, in this particular camp. Ain't nothing like an Andy Reid uh, football camp, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Very competitive, um, the reps high intensity. Um, I can tell you we um, literally um, conditioned as we're practicing, and that's the, um, one of the main things. Um, it was kind of similar in Seattle with um, Coach Pete out there, but um, out here, you know, it's a whole different world. This ain't Seattle. You know, it's kind of a little bit more humid out here, weather a little bit different, a little bit more muggy, so it take a, a whole different attitude. You know, you got to come to work ready. You got to come to work hydrated. They telling me now, you know, I got to get IVs and stuff. I got to stay hydrated. I got to stay up to par on my, um, my waters and stuff so I can come out here every day and compete. And all those things come back down to attitude and energy, just like we're talking about with Frank Clark because that's what he brings. He's not going to let anybody take reps off. He's not going to take anything lying down, basically. He's going to push everyone to their brink to be better, to get better, to play better. And that's what he has to do. That's part of the reason he's here. It's not just his athletic ability. It's being able to bring that edge to this defense. I'm, 
I owe him all my energy. I mean, that's that's. I feel like that's a, one of those un, un, unhidden. I mean, one of those hidden attributes. Um, you know, your energy, the vibe you come in with every day. You know how you come to work. You know, because at the end of the day, it's, you, you want to make a good impression. You know, you don't want to come in with your head down. You know, looking sluggish, looking tired, because that might affect that young rookie yeah. who don't know, who don't understand. You know, this stuff. You know, so at the end of the day. I feel like when you come in every day with energy, you come in every day just with that will to compete and the, and the positive attitude. You know, no matter what's going on, you got to walk into here with a new, with a new light. You know, with a new idea, with a new way. And um, I feel like as long as you do that, you know, you're gonna be alright. And it's not just him because he's got to work with somebody else. And the pairing, uh, and we talked about this on the Locked On Chiefs podcast last week. The pairing of him and Chris Jones together, especially now that Chris Jones is back in camp, uh, putting things aside, getting down to business. Uh, in fact, Steve Spagnuolo had a, a quote that Chris Jones is doing extra work at night to try to get caught up. But Frank, I, I think, is pretty confident in what he and Chris Jones are going to be able to do together. Yeah, I tell you, Chris going to make my job way easier. <laughs> I'll tell you that. We're going to have a problem, though. He got, we got to share some sacks. He got to share some sacks. He's getting a lot of sacks, you know. He's going to have to share some. Um, man, with Chris, I mean... Man, look at look at the film. I mean, the guy is an extremely talented football player. He's extremely gifted. There's so much more I can do with him. There's so much more. You know, he's a great athlete. I'm a great athlete. You know, I'm a little bit faster. Um, so he's a little bit stronger, but nah, we go figure it out. And at the end of the day, the defense has got to continue to make progress. But at the end of the day, what we see here so far is that the competition in camp has already leaped well over what we saw last season. Um, and, and last camp, there were still questions, question marks about Patrick Mahomes, about what this team could be. Now, all that seems to be wiped off the table, especially the way people are performing, and the defense has got to step up. And it's good to see them do that. And, uh, you know, Frank put it this way. I feel like we did wonderful. We won to know. We won today for sure. <laughs> defense, we won today for sure. A win today is what it's about so you can get to the next one and try to win again. And that's really what it comes down to, and that's what his leadership, Tyron Matthews' leadership, and Pat Mahomes' leadership comes down to. Continue to work, continue to grind right now, because this this is it. This is where this team is going to be forged. I'm looking forward to it, and I think they're on the right track. I want to know what you think. Uh, if you like the video, leave that thumbs up, but definitely leave your comments below. What are you looking for? What are you concerned about? How do you feel about these two guys in Tyron Matthew and Frank Clark being the opposite side in terms of leadership for Patrick Mahomes? Uh, leave your comments down below. Thanks for watching today. Make sure you check out these videos, and I'll talk to you next time.